Professor Dave and Chegg here, when we first learned chemistry, we were introduced to the concept of acids and bases. But acid-base chemistry will be a very important part of organic chemistry. So let's review some definitions and make sure we are ready to go a little deeper with these concepts. It is actually the case that there is more than one model for acids and bases. However, the one we will be using most frequently in organic chemistry is the bronsted lowry model. This model describes an acid as something that donates a proton, and a base as something that accepts a proton. When we say proton, what we are referring to is a positively charged hydrogen ion. Since a typical hydrogen atom consists of simply one proton and one electron, an H plus ion is actually just a proton, or the nucleus of the hydrogen atom. Proton transfer is the most common framework from which we will be discussing acidity and basicity, so we should get used to thinking of an acid as something that can give up a proton, and a base as something that can accept a proton. Take a look at this reaction with hydrochloric acid and water. These will undergo an acid-base reaction, whereby hydrochloric acid donates a proton to a water molecule, which can accept the proton because oxygen has two lone pairs, and we will represent this activity by drawing an arrow from the oxygen atom to the hydrogen atom, and then another arrow from this hydrogen-chlorine bond to the chlorine. This indicates that there is a new oxygen-hydrogen bond, while the electrons in this bond remain with the chlorine atom, resulting in the chloride ion. This means hydrogen lost its electron, which is why we refer to this as proton transfer. With any such acid-base reaction under the bronsted lowry model, we will be producing a conjugate base and a conjugate acid, which are the molecules that are produced as the result of the proton transfer. With hydrochloric acid, losing a proton will yield a chloride anion, which is its conjugate base. If this were to act as a base and accept a proton, we would get back hydrochloric acid, which is why these species have a conjugate relationship. And with water, gaining a proton will yield a hydronium ion, which is its conjugate acid. This is H3O+, with a positive charge on the oxygen atom, since it has donated one of its electrons to hydrogen to form this covalent bond, leaving it to contribute only 5 to this Lewis dot structure. So we must understand that in a bronsted lowry acid base reaction, an acid donates a proton to become its conjugate base, and a base accepts a proton to become its conjugate acid. Because this process is reversible, we will use equilibrium arrows, as shown here. And of course, we could demonstrate this with numerous other reactions, involving an acid and water, or a base and water, or an acid and a base, and in each case, the chemistry will involve a simple proton transfer to yield two conjugate species. In examining these, we will notice that water can act as either an acid or a base, making it amphoteric, which is one of its most important properties. We should now understand how acids and bases are defined under the bronsted lowry model, and if given two species that participate in an acid-base reaction, how to draw the products, which are the conjugate species. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.